Hey guys, welcome to Algorithms Made Easy. In this series, we are trying to learn about trees. So if you are also trying to learn data structures, then don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you never miss any update on the videos we post. In the last few videos, we have learned questions on binary search tree. Now let's move ahead to another topic. In this video, we will be learning about expression trees and XOR trees. So let's get started. Let's start with expression trees. Expression tree is a specific kind of a binary tree used to represent expressions. We have two very common type of expressions, algebraic and boolean that can be represented using the expression tree. Now that we know what is stored in the expression tree, the next question that comes to our mind is how do we store these expressions? An expression contains two kind of data. One is the operator or the mathematical operator like addition, subtraction or multiplication operator etc. And the second is the operand, the variable or the constant on which the operator is applied to perform some calculations. So in the expression tree, the operators form the internal nodes whereas the operands form the outer nodes or the leaf node. Why this is done will be clear to you when we see an example. Before that, we know that the operations or the expression evaluation follow certain rules. The board mass precedence rule. According to this rule, the first priority is given to the expression enclosed within the bracket. The order precedence follow the bracket, which is followed by multiplication and division, which have the same priority. And then at the end comes the addition and subtraction. So if you take this example, it contains three types of operations that have different priorities, the bracket, the multiplication and the addition. Thus, according to the Bodmas rule, the brackets are evaluated first, which is followed by multiplication. So let's evaluate the brackets first. The content inside the bracket will form the tree. So there'll be three nodes, one for A, other for plus and the last one for B. And these will be broken down as left, root and right based on the rules. The operand forms the leaf and the operator is the internal node. Thus plus becomes the root and a and b becomes left and right respectively as they are on the left and right of the root. This becomes our tree. Now we take the remaining part. For this the root will be multiplication and the right will be c while the tree we processed earlier will be the left tree. This will give us this tree which is the expression tree for the given expression. The expression can be returned in three forms infix, prefix and postfix similar to the in-order, pre-order and post-order reversal. Here we can see that the expression we used was infix1 as we did break the expression into left, root and right. Given a postfix expression, here is the algorithm that will be used to create an expression tree. First, we initialize a stack. Then we iterate over the expression array and for each element there can be two conditions. Either the element is an operand or an operator. If it is an operand, we create a leaf node with a value and push this node in the stack. Otherwise, we pop two nodes from the stack and assign it to right and left respectively. Then we create the root node with the operator value and assign the popped nodes to its left and right. After this, we push the root in the stack. Once everything is done, the stack will only have the root of the created tree. So we return the top of the stack. Now let's see the code for this. Here's the tree node class with the value left and right node. Here's the main class in which we have a main method that has the postfix tree array, the call to the create tree method and the call to the in order method to print the in order of the tree we generate. Here is the create tree method. In this, we create a stack and iterate over the array. Here first we check if the value is operand or an operator. For this, we call the is operator method. This method checks if the character is one of the four operators. If the value is not an operator, meaning it is an operand, we create a node with this and push it in the stack. Otherwise, we pop two elements from the stack and create the root node while attaching the left and right to it. After this, we push the created node in the stack. Finally, we return the top of the stack. Last is the basic in order function that gives us the in order traversal for the created tree. If we run this code, here is the output that we'll get. 
which says the tree is what it looks on the right and thus is the correct one. Go ahead and try creating the expression tree from infix and prefix expression on your own to test your knowledge and get an hands-on as well. Expression trees can be used in evaluating the expression that are provided in the string format. Also, there is a library in C Sharp on expressions and parsing expression that uses this concept. Now, let's move on to the Zor trees. These are also used in stackless and queueless reversal similar to threaded binary tree. Mostly, they are used in traversing back and forth to and from the parent. In a Zor tree, the left node contains a pointer to Zor of parent and left child, while the right node contains the Zor of parent and right child. While evaluating the left and right, we need to take a note that the parent of the root will be null and the child for the leaf will be null. Let's take this tree. So, the left and right will look like this. If we see node B, its left is parent A XOR with the left child D, while its right is parent A XOR with its right child E. Same with all other nodes. Now, Suppose you are at B and you need to move to its parent. So, the parent will be current node's left pointer Zor with the current node's left child value or current node's right pointer Zor with the current node's right child value. If we evaluate this, we get A for both the equations as Zor removes the duplicates. That is, the element Zor with itself is zero. In this way, we can find a parent or a child using the ZOR values for the tree node. That's it for today. In the next video, we will see the concept of AVL tree. Till then, keep learning, keep practicing.